Shalom Israel and welcome to another edition of Yashua's 20 minute breakdown where I'll attempt to break down the scriptures within 20 minutes but first and foremost as always we give all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kadash and the Yakims and the Elders in the highways and byways pushing this word in truth and sincerity all praises and the elder women teaching the younger women all praises to you too and the camps going out there um, making videos edifying the body pushing the truth according to scriptures all praises now what i'm going to touch on today is the book of john the 19th chapter and the 30th verse where yahweh shai which is the one that you call christ remember i've been saying i'm going to be using his correct name i'm not going to be using the name that the heathen gave us in slavery um, which is the name Jesus. That's the name they gave us in slavery to worship. With that name comes a Caucasian Christ and, you know, no laws because they say the laws are done away with. Now, anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to the book of John, the 19th chapter, the, the 30th verse, where Yahawashai was on the cross, you know, being crucified and he said that his last words, he said, it is finished. And then he bowed down his head and he gave up the ghost. Now, now the Christians like to use when he says when he was on the cross and he said it is finished. They like to use Matthew 5, 17 to connect with that, with that verse, with John 19 and 30. Because they like to say Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 17, where it says, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, they use that verse now in John 19.30. When he says it is finished, they're saying, you know, he fulfilled the law. You know, that's what they say. And that's what they use Matthew 5.17 to say he fulfilled the law, to say we no longer have to keep the law because he fulfilled the law. And then in John 19.30, where he says it is finished and he bowed down his head and he gave up the ghost, um, meaning he died at that point. They're trying to say, you know, um, that's it. Like, you know, the laws are done away with because he said it is finished. Everything's finished. What they don't realize, what he is actually saying when he's on the cross, when he says it is finished, he is saying he has finished his father's work, that what he was sent to do in the flesh, that's what he's finished. And I'm going to prove that in the scriptures to show you that's what he's talking about when he says it is finished. Because you look at this, right? Let's read, you know, if we read Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, where he says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, that's what he says in Mark chapter i mean in matthew chapter 5 verse 17 now people use that when he says i've come i've not come to destroy but to fulfill they try to say see he fulfilled the law but he doesn't say that he says think not that i have come to destroy the law so he said think not that i've come to destroy the law i haven't come to do away with the law and he says all the prophets now that's one thing people miss when he says all the prophets the, now why does he say all the prophets because the prophets spoke many things and they also, you know, a lot of them said the law would endure forever and so forth. Now, if he came and now took away the law, he will be destroying that prophet. But remember in Matthew 5 verse 17, he says, think not. So he said, don't think I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. So he's not come to destroy the law, to do away with the law, or he's not come to do away with anything the prophets have said. What he's come to is fulfill what the prophets had said. That's what he's come to do is fulfill what the prophets had said. Because watch this, right? Now, in Luke chapter 16 and verse 17, where, you know, I'm going to paraphrase because there's a lot of scriptures here and I don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to quickly paraphrase, but I'm going to call the scriptures and you can go to them yourself and read them. Now, in Luke chapter 16 and verse 17, where it says that, um, like, 
you know, the law won't fail. Right? You know, you can read that yourself. It says like, you know, that it's a law that won't fail. So that law is here forever. Yeah. And then in Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse nine, where Moses says that um, the commandments are for a thousand generations. And then you've got in Psalms, you know, like, you know, David and Solomon, they wrote Psalms. You've got where it says that um, the laws must be made known to our children. Now, if you're going to make these things known to your children, well, how could they be done away with? And then if you go into Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13, it says the laws are true commandments. You know, you know, they are true. They are, you know, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. And then if you go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 4, it says, um, he is faithful to them that keep his laws and his commandments. Yeah, he's faithful to them that and rewarder of them that keep his commandments. Right, and that's in Daniel. If you go to Amos chapter two and verse four, he says uh, where you must be, you keep the law. I'm just paraphrasing them, but you can go to and read them yourself. Yeah, and then if you go into the book of John chapter fourteen and verse fifteen, at his own mouth. The Messiah says, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. So you see, then you've got Baruch chapter four, verse one in the Apocrypha, the Baruch, so the book, this is one of the books that was removed out of the um, Bible by the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestants under the Roman Catholic Church. In Baruch chapter four, chapter four, verse one, it says the law that endureth forever. Forever means forever. I mean, come on. Then you've got Romans chapter 3, verse 31, where it says, we establish the law. Paul, teaching the law. To establish something, you must be still teaching the law. Because he says, yeah, we establish the law. So the law is still being established. It's still being taught. And it must be still being kept. Then you go into Malachi, yeah? Um, Malachi, the prophet Malachi, he says, remember ye the law of Moses. So he tells you not to forget the law. You must remember the law, yeah? So, you know, and even in the book of Second John, chapter 1, verse 6, it says, the law that you've heard from the beginning, the commandments that you've heard from the beginning, you must walk therein. Show you that the law of Moses, the commandments that you heard from the beginning, you must be walking in it. In Revelations, chapter 14, verse 12, it says, they, that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahushai. So you see, all these verses and all these prophets said about the law that endure forever is the law that's here to stay, blah, blah, you know, and so forth. Yeah. Now, if the Messiah did away with the law, he would be destroying that prophet. And he said, remember, in, that, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. Then you got a member abbreviation. Then he says, I have I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now we jump to John chapter 9, verse 30, John chapter 19, verse 30, where he says, Now on the cross, it is finished. That's his final words before he dies. You know, and there you see what he's talking about, that he has done all that he came to do. Because remember, he taught the law also. So he taught his, his disciples the law, which the disciples now were supposed to go out and teach the law to many others who had fell away from the law under the Greek captivity and so forth. You see, these are the things he fulfilled. So now, let's go into the scriptures now. And let's, let's go into this lesson. And let's break this down to show you where what he meant when he said, it is finished. So, I've got my timer. This is John chapter 19, verse 30. I've got my timer in three, two, one. Boom, we're away. Let's go straight there. Let's read it. John chapter 19 and verse 30, and it reads, When Yehoshai therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, there we go. That's the verse we're dealing with, showing you clearly that that was his final words before he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost, you know, to be resurrected on the third day, of course. But we know he actually, he doesn't actually die. He only sleeps and then he, he rises on the third day, you know. Right now, 
Let's go. Let's jump to the book of John, chapter 17 and verse 4. Listen to this, yeah? John, chapter 17 and verse 4. And it reads, I have glorified thee on the earth. Here we go. Listen to this. See, he said, he's speaking to the Father. He said he has glorified thee on the earth. So he's showing that he's glorified his Father, which is Yahweh. Shai. Remember, he, oh, so lucky, which is Yahweh. Remember, the Christ as you know him as Jesus Christ. His correct name is Yahweh. Shai. Now, he is saying at his own mouth, I glorified, I glorified thee on earth. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the Most High, Yahweh. That's who he's talking to. Let's read on. I'll take it from the top. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 4, and it reads, I have glorified thee on earth. Here we go. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So you see, there it's shown you clearly. That's what he that's what he had fulfilled. He's finished the work the most high gave him to do. Yeah? It's you know, that's simple. But let's, you know, right, so that's, see, I don't really even have to go any further than that, really, because that speaks for itself, clearly, right there anyway. But let's, um, let's go back in time and show you a few things that, you know, he was said he would come and do and what he done. Now, let's jump to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 18 into 19. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 and it reads I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him that's that's the prophecy of Yahweh Shai coming, uh, raised up from amongst his brethren. Remember, he was from the tribe of Judah. He was an Israelite, yeah? You know, which was known, as they say, as a Jew. So, see, that's the prophecy of him coming. Verse 19 of Deuteronomy 18. And it reads, And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my word, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So you see that? Yahawashai came to speak Yahweh's words in his name. Because look at that. Remember, it, the scripture does say, for my name is in him. So you see, this is how you know it's the correct name as well. Because look, in, in Yahawashai, you get the father's name, Yahweh. Yahawashai. And the father's name, Yahweh. You see, you get the son's name is in the father's name. The, you know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see, the father's name is in the son's name. So lucky, that's what I meant to say. So you see, the father's name is in the son's name. So you see, you cannot say the son's name without first saying the father's name. That's, you see, that's the point. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So you can't say the, the son's name without saying the father's name first. You see that? Right, so it's showing you that that was of him, that was prophesied of him coming. And watch this, actually. I'm going to jump to the book of Genesis, chapter 49. Watch this, yeah? Genesis, chapter 49, and I'll take it at verse 10. Listen to this. Genesis, chapter 49, verse 10, and it reads, The sepulchre shall not depart from Judah. Listen to this. Nor a lawgiver. See that? Nor a lawgiver. Well, depart from Judah. Nor a lawgiver. Who was that lawgiver that came from Judah? Yahawashai, the one you call Christ, yeah? From between, I re, I'll take from the top again. Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. The, the, sepul the sepulchre shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from, beneath, from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Listen to this, yeah. I'm gonna um just I'm gonna jump down to um verse twelve, yeah. Forty nine, Genesis forty nine, and I jump down to verse twelve, and it reads: His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. So now, now see that his eyes shall be red with wine. We know that the first miracle. Yahweh Shai did was turn water to wine. But we know if you go to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8, we know that wine is much doctrine, the pure and the, you know, 
untainted, undiluted doctrine and understanding. You know, so we know that's what that wine really represents. And then remember, it does say in that verse, his teeth shall be white with milk. Now, if you go to the book of First Peter, chapter 2, verse 2, showing you that milk he shall be white with is the first principles, the laws, the first principles, which is the first five books of Moses, because that's the milk of the word. So he will know the laws unfamiliarly, like the back of his hand. So that's what that's showing you, yeah? That he would know the laws and he didn't, and he never transgressed any of the laws, yeah? Just wanted to get that in. Now, let's jump now back to Matthew. Let's jump up to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. These are all things that, remember, he said it was, it was finished in John chapter 19, verse 30. So these are all things that, that was pertain to him, pertaining to him that he came and fulfilled. Watch this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and it reads, And she shall bring forth a son. The she is Mary. Yeah? And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Yehowashai. For he shall save his people from their sins. And that's another thing he fulfilled. Because he came now where, where he came with grace. So where before uh, the children of Israel were being put to death. When they broke certain laws. Because remember, sin is the transgression of the law. So when they broke certain laws, there were some laws you couldn't use animal sacrifice for. So your blood had to be spilled. Now Yahushai came to give you grace, meaning now you can repent. So you wouldn't be put to death. You can acknowledge your sin, acknowledge your transgression that, yes, I've broken the laws. And then you try to do better and you repent. So you turn from breaking the laws into keeping the laws that so you try to do it better. So that's how he saved these people. He saved them from death because from death. Now they weren't being put to death. They can repent, change from their old ways and renew their mind and try to keep the laws. That's, you know, what he fulfilled also. Now watch this. I'm going to jump to the book of John. Let's get through this quick as we can. John chapter 1 verse 14. Listen to this. John chapter 1 verse 14 and it reads, And the word was made flesh. See, he is the word. Yahweh Shai, the one you call Christ, he is the word. And it was made flesh. Listen to this. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. So we beheld all the glory of the things that he did. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Yeah? Let me read that again fluently. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Here we go. Full of grace and truth. You see that? Now, that's just what I was explaining earlier. Full of grace. He came with grace. So we don't have to be put to, we no longer being put to death for breaking the laws. And, he, and you know, full of grace and truth. What are the truth? The laws. He came with the, all the true laws. Yeah. And I'll show you that the truth is the laws. Let's quickly jump to, bu -bu -bum. let's quickly jump to Psalms. Actually, before I jump to Psalms to show you that, um, let me just go back into John. Go back into John. I'm just going to read verse 17, actually, of the same chapter. Watch this. John chapter 1, verse 17 now. Listen to this, and it reads, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahawashai. So I just want to show you that where it said in verse 14, in John chapter 1, verse 14, he, he came full of grace and truth. And then verse 17 in, of the same chapter showing you that, that Yahweh Shai, yeah, but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai. Now let's show you what the, the truth, we know grace, he brought grace, so we were no longer being put to death for breaking the laws. We can now turn from it and keep them, try to do it better each time. Every time you fall, you don't stay falling, you get back up and you brush yourself off. Bear that in mind, try not to do the same sins over and over again. You make an error. Acknowledge it and try to fix it and do better. Watch this, yeah? Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Where are we? Psalms 119, verse 142. Listen to this. And it reads, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. See? The law is the truth. And that's what Yahweh came with. 
grace and truth. He came with, you know, like, so you don't be put to death for breaking the laws, but he, but he came teaching the laws, yeah? Also, yeah? And watch this, yeah? First Peter, let's see if I can run through his time. It's going so fast, I can't believe it. Um, first Peter, let's quickly jump to First Peter chapter 2, verse 21 into 22, just to show you this also. I like to cover all angles. Watch this. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21, and it reads, For even hereunto were ye called, because the Messiah also suffered for us. See, he suffered for us. That's what he fulfilled, leaving us an example. So he left an example that ye should follow his steps. So let's see what the example he left that we are supposed to follow. Verse 22, who did no sin, he never ever broke any of the Most High's laws. So that's the example we are supposed to follow. Neither was guile found in his mouth. So he never said anything deceitful. What he said, he meant. Yeah? So neither was guile found in his mouth. That's the example we are supposed to be following to this day. We ain't supposed to do no sin. So we should, not, we should not be breaking the Most High God's laws. None of them. And we shouldn't lie to our brothers or sisters on anything yeah so that's you know that's the example he left for us yeah now let's jump back to john chapter 19 verse 30 because remember he said john chapter 19 and verse 30 and he said and it reads when yahushai therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost so remember he said it's finished so let's see some of the things as well that 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 you know was prophesied that was accomplished in him yeah now watch this i'm going to quickly jump to the book of psalms where are we psalms chapter 34 and verse 20 watch this yeah psalms chapter 34 and verse 20 and it reads he keepeth all his bones not one of them is broken now you see that was another thing that was said of that wasn't going to happen to him because the two that was crucified with him side by side the romans came and saw that you know like they weren't dead yet and all that so they break their legs so you know the weight so rather than they can use their legs to support them to stay alive long alive longer they broke their legs so now all the weight is now on their chest and diaphragm and they'll you know they'll pass a bit quicker but when they looked at you how was I? you know what actually let me not even say that let me read it john watch this yeah let me actually read it. John chapter 19, boom, 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 verse 33. Listen to this. John chapter 19, verse 33. And it reads, But when they came to Yahushai and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. Now you see that? So you see, with the others that was crucified with him, they broke their legs. But when they came to Yahushai to do the same, they saw he was dead already. So they didn't break his leg. Remember, he fulfilled that scripture. Because remember, in Psalms, it told you he won't have, you know, none of his bones will be broken. Yeah? Watch this again. Jump to the book of Psalms again. And watch this. Psalms chapter 22 and verse 18. Listen to this. Psalms chapter 22, verse 18, and it reads, They they parted my garments among them, among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So they cast lots upon his vesture. Let's see what, what that is talking about. Let's jump to Matthew. Watch this. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 35. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 35, and it reads, and they crucified him and parted his garments, cast lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Now you see, those are that's what he fulfilled. And when he said it is finished, all these things that he done. That's what it, it it was finished. He finished all that he came to do. Remember, I read that that you know that in John chapter seventeen verse four that he said he's finished all the work he's you know his father sent him to do. Now watch this, Isaiah. Let's jump to Isaiah. Boy, I got to move on. Let's jump to Isaiah quickly, chapter fifty three, bum bum bum, and verse twelve. Listen to this, yeah. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12 and it reads therefore will I divide him a portion with the great 
and he shall listen to this and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because the, because he has poured out his soul unto death here we go and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sins the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors now look at this right remember that yeah now watch this yeah mark let's jump to the book of mark chapter 15 verse 28 listen to this yeah mark chapter 15 verse 28 and it reads and the scriptures and the scripture was fulfilled which saith he and which saith and he was numbered with the transgressors so you see i'm showing you everything that he done showing you that scriptures was fulfilled now watch this yeah I'm going to quickly, boy, time's going quick, I have to move quick. Psalms, watch this, Psalms chapter 16 and verse 11. Check this out, yeah? Psalms chapter 16 and verse 11, and it reads, Thou wilt show, thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy, present, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Now, was that the scriptures? Six, Psalm 16 verse 11 mm, now you know what I've gone to the wrong scripture actually uh, oh, I've just gone to the wrong scripture um, that's not the scripture actually I wanted to read there was one particular that I, I wanted to read just to show you show you something oh time is running up quickly oh Oh, oh, that's the one. I so lucky I read eleven. I meant to read ten. So lucky on that. Listen to this. Psalms chapter sixteen, verse ten, and it reads, "For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption." You see, his body would not see corruption. Remember, he was in the earth for three days and three nights, and then he rose again. So his body didn't see corruption. Watch this. Yeah. This is what he fulfilled as well. Acts chapter 2, verse 31. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This is what happens when you rush, your mind goes blank. Chapter 2, verse 31, and it reads, Acts chapter 2, verse 31, and it reads, He seeing this, therefore spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. So you see, he didn't, his body didn't see corruption, so it didn't decay. So he rose again. And that's what he fulfilled. Watch this. Um, Acts. Let's quickly give you one more before I time out. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Listen to this. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. And it reads, But those things which the, 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 our power before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that the Messiah should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Now, there we have it. So showing you he fulfilled everything that he was sent to do and that's why he says this how quickly i'll give you this one more one more time again um john chapter 17 verse 4 that's why he says this john chapter 17 verse 4 i have glorified thee on earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do so there we have it so i hope you got something with that so when he bowed down, he said, and said, it is finished. He finished the work the most high power, his father, gave him to do. But the laws, statutes and commandments, his, all the feast days, the Sabbath, um, the um, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Tabernacles, Day of Atonement, and all these other feast days that's in the Bible with the laws, statutes and commandments, with the... Um, dietary law and all these other laws foods we can eat and can't eat you know they still stand this day and we must still be keeping them and doing them with the faith of Yahweh with that we out <laughs>